There's talk that the government should be doing more to help uh, families. Do you think they should? Well, I think, yes, they should in the sense that it's appalling to think that only the rich can stay really warm. And it's really important if you're elderly to keep the heating on. I know my mum is already one of those people who keep the heating off and put a coat and extra jumpers on but still won't be warm and risks all sorts of um, respiratory problems as a result. So, yes, I would like to see the government properly address the energy crisis. But more than that, we should recognise they've contributed, not as many people think... Um, by failing to nationalise, which I just think is a nonsense in terms of cheaper energy. We know there are global factors increasing energy prices, but in the ludicrous net zero um, campaign that the government is behind, this is not going to be solved in the short term or even in the long term with renewables and throwing huge amounts of money at it. But if the government was serious about energy generation to meet the demand... We wouldn't have these fuel hikes. And if it was to embrace the gas beneath our feet through at least some fracking, um, as well as nuclear, um, we have the potential, if the fossil fuels, fuels could stop being made this F word, to solve our problems. And that's where I'd like to see the government go. Yes, cut VAT. That's a good thing for industry, in fact, because it doesn't really affect our individual consumer bills. Um, as we, we don't, we don't, we only pay uh, the lower levy. Um, cut that, yes, but that'll probably only shave 100 quid off. But I do think there has to be seriously, uh, the government has to seriously address the energy shortage. Alex? Uh, so there's some relief coming, I think, from, from what Kerry was asking, from an unexpected quarter, in that over New Year I noticed that the European Union's Commission um, gave a statement about what energies it would consider to be green, that is to say energies which they regard more positively, which won't be taxed as punitively and so forth. And both gas, which was sort of expected as the bridging uh, fossil fuel, and nuclear, which is a big divider on the continent, were included on that list. So just at the time when the UK, having been better in some ways on energy than some of our neighbours, is falling behind, we see the European Union, quite surprisingly, given its um, targets on climate change, doing something that I think we should do, which is saying, effectively, if we want to keep the lights on, we've got to stop beating up those that do it. Well... Boris Johnson, you may famously, uh, well, may remember, famously promised that one of the reasons we'd got VAT on fuel was because of <coughs> Europe, and um, that was one of the things that was going to happen after Brexit. Well, you know, you, you could get rid of the 5% for a start, even though, as Kerry rightly says, it, it barely touches the sides of domestic consumption. But it would be a start. You could uh, have a look at the warm homes discount. Um, you could perhaps rethink the £20 cut in universal credit. You could also have a look, as many mm. people previously have said, you know, the, the, um, the cold fuel allowance, the winter fuel allowance that goes to all pensioners, regardless of their wealth or their needs. You know, nobody likes means-tested benefits, but actually if there are people who can't afford to heat their homes and there's somebody who can well afford to keep their homes... You need to look at the benefits that are available. But why would the you say that no one likes means-tested yeah. benefits? I, I like means-tested benefits. I like those. I That's a idea. great idea. idea. Well, but I mean, but politicians don't. They don't want to. Because they think in. their voters don't like it. They don't want to bring in something, and you know, and it's an attack on pensions. Yeah. Uh, so it's very politically uh, dynamic. And what Angela Rayner said in the Commons today, you know, she is right in that the, the not this government, but previous governments have ignored um, reports time and time again about the need to build up gas storage facilities and just ignored well, those reports and went ahead and closed them down. It, we and closed they, rough the one meaningful facility exactly, we had, which has which reduced is, our capacity from months to weeks. Which is bonkers, absolutely well, bonkers. We agree. So we, we've got no way of stockpiling a little bit of gas. And the other thing is that there needs to be a real proper built-into joined-up government policy about planning and building that no more new build should be, take place unless it's green and efficient. So I agree with some of that. I definitely agree we should take VAT off. Uh, and I also agree that was one of the things the Prime Minister, the now Prime Minister, said yeah. in the course of the run-up to uh, our Brexit uh, referendum. We said we could do it, and now we, we clearly, in my view, um, should do it. But the other thing I think about this interesting challenge that you were speaking about 
is that even if people don't want to have means-tested benefits, in part, and we can understand this, because uh, you know, the Prime Minister, on the other hand, is looking at a tax cut, which will give a lot of help to people who don't need it, right? If you cut that, you're also you're Absolutely. cutting back for everybody, which includes the very wealthy. So the other ha thing you could do, even if you don't go to means-testing benefit, is openly invite people who don't need it not to take or to return their winter fuel allowance. Which has been a campaign for years and years and years, right by and age, now okay. is the, But now is the time um, to do it. But actually, you know, if you use the argument that cutting VAT benefits the wealthy more than the poor... Oh, I'm not. I do it. I no, cut no, no, that. But, but that's what he was saying yeah. yesterday um, in, in, in his press conference. Yeah. But then that argument doesn't follow through if you then allow wealthy pensioners I, to get the 300 I completely quid. agree, which is why I would actually raise the winter fuel allowance, but it make, allow people to make a <laughs> virtue-signalling process of not taking it. But do you think they would, though, Kerry? So the point here is um, Boris Johnson has been quite reluctant to kind of um, make cuts because he doesn't want very rich pensioners to, or, or even not even very rich, but, you know, moderately well-off people that could afford this to benefit from this. What they're suggesting, Alex, uh, just suggesting here, is actually give people the opportunity to return it. Do you think people would? Well, I think some might, but I think regardless, it's, this is tinkering. I don't think in the long term... This is going to solve the problem of, you know, low energy generation in the UK yep. and global energy prices. It's not going to solve it. We can do some of that to help people out in the short term. I don't have a problem with that. I actually don't even care whether, you know, some richer people pay a bit less fat. Yes, we can beg and plead to get the cash off them. And maybe we will, maybe we won't. But I am concerned that this, we are heading for increasing pauperisation because environmental policies aren't just going to infect, uh, affect energy prices, they're going to affect all sorts, because mm. we have anti-consumption politics, which uniformly, more uh, than anyone else, pauperises working-class families.